Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusker here for another great special edition of the show. I'm here with Dave Riley at Dukeman uh, Family Vineyards. Family Vineyards, right? Yes, uh, Duke Winery. Family Winery. Winery, yes, Dukeman Family Winery. And uh, he's been kind enough to uh, take me on a little tour of the place and talk a little bit about, about the winery here. And we're about to taste some amazing wines. But first, let's go ahead and talk about you, Dave. How did you get into this? You know, tell us a little history about yourself. Uh, actually, yeah used to own a construction company and uh, realized about 10 years into that that there had to be more to life and uh, I had 25 acres in Wimberley that I wound up uh, planting about a half acre in grapes uh, followed by another half acre followed by another acre followed by three more acres and ultimately ended up with uh, seven acres under vine and had successfully worked myself out of uh, construction. Nice. So, yeah it worked out. Nice, and we were talking about what you, uh, you, you did some trial, tri some trial by, well, not trial and tribulation, but you kind of worked through some of your, uh, what we grew, you kind of uh, yeah. worked through what, what you, you realized what works well and what doesn't work well. Right, I, yeah, I started with things like, at my vineyard, um, San Giovese and Cab, and, and um, that was back in, you know, 2000, 2003 time. Um, this vineyard was actually planted in 2005 and then um, by, by Mark Penna, my predecessor here, and, um, had the opportunity to learn what, what grapes really should be grown in Texas. Okay. Yeah, I'm, and that's something that, you know, I, I've, I've already discussed with you that, you know, this, this week of coming here, you know, that seems to be a common theme that many of the, many of the places are, are seeing that there's some grapes that really take well to Texas and others maybe not so well. You know? Right, and, right. And that's, that's part of the philosophy here, really. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it's, you know, our philosophy is if it grows well in Texas, we'll, we'll make wine uh, within reason. Right. You know, but it's, uh, you know, we're, we're really just primarily focused on, we, we started with the Italian varietals because we um, believed that those would do well in Texas and I think um, we've had more success with those varietals and um, and, and there are others that we have contracts for, like uh, Tempranillo, which of course mm -hmm. is not Italian, but uh, but I, I think does well in Texas, and you'll see a Tempranillo from us uh, in the uh, 2011 vintage. Right. So that's cool. Um, and then, um, uh, so you've been here for how long? I've been here since uh, since 2006. Okay. Uh, actually planted the second half of this vineyard, um, and then uh, came on board. Um, after after that, and in, in kind of the early summer, uh, Mark Pena called me, um, said he needed help, and and I needed experience. Okay. And uh, that that was the beginning of our mutually beneficial relationship. Very cool, very cool. Um, about how much uh, acreage do you have here on, on the property? There's uh, 17 acres planted here, um, and that's uh, we've got Montevolciano, um, Alianico, Sangiovese. Some Vermentino, a little bit of Muscat, and actually just planted some Tempranillo. Okay, and then um, you also have you also, I, I believe we were talking about. Do you get some stuff from the High Plains? Also? Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, we, you know, almost everything we get really comes from uh, from the High Plains. We we still do get uh, a, you know the seven acres that was my old place in Wimberley. Mm -hmm. uh, we still buy those grapes. Um, but yeah, I would say we are weighted very heavily on uh, High Plains fruit. But a hundred percent, either High Plains or Hill Country, it all comes from Texas. Which uh, to me is very key: is that um, when we're tasting Texas wines, that they are from Texas. And I mean, it's just like we I, right before we started recording. You know, I'm, I'm not going to buy a California wine that 
doesn't come from California, so they <laughs> were called California grapes, so or yeah. just like in Europe, same idea. Right, right. You know, at least at least for the purposes of review. I mean, if I'm wanting to just drink anything, I guess it doesn't matter. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, but but to me, you know, uh, my my philosophy is Texas wine should support Texas agriculture, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I'm I'm proud of the wines we make, and I'm I'm pr you know, more proud that that they're grown right here in Texas by by Texas farmers who I know personally, you know, we, we have uh, relationships with these guys. They have right. families. Some of them, like the Binghams and the Oswalds, very, very large families, you know, lots of kids and things like that. They're great people and, uh, and they are professional farmers. Awesome. Yeah, that's what it really is hitting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, uh, and then uh, we were discussing uh, about how many labels do you have on average? It's, it ranges between, it's a, around 10. Okay. Um, so we'll have, uh, you know, kind of our, our staple, you know, Dolcetto, Sangiovese, Montepulciano, Ionico for reds. Um, we, we should, and Canto Felice, can't, can't forget Canto Felice. Um, uh, if we don't make that, there's, there's, a, there's a lynch mob. Um, and so we've got, you know, like four dry reds and a sweet red um, that's, in my opinion, kind of sweet wine for people who don't like sweet wine. Right. Um, uh, it's, we start with like a real wine and then sweeten it to taste and it, it has nice balance. Um, for whites, kind of the same, uh, Trebbiano, Vermentino, and Viognier. Um, we do also make Pinot Grigio and we make um, uh, Bianco that we, we're out of right now. It, didn't realize how popular that one was going to be. Uh, just off dry. Mm -hmm. um, then we have kind of what I call a transient wine, which is one that we may have one one vintage and not the next. Um, for 2010, it's uh, our GSM. Um, we've we've had Zinfandels in the past, and uh, Zinfandel is kind of a tough one um, when we can make it great and we're proud of it and you see it and right. when, it, when it ends up uh, maybe not being so Zinfandel-esque, we, um, we do something else with it. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but, that, but that's very important because, you know, you're, you're, you're not just going to put it out. Right. If, no, it, if no. it doesn't meet your quality standards, it's, exactly it's just not going to be put out. Right. And, and uh, I, I left out Tempranillo and that's, uh, that's another one you will, you will see, maybe, possibly not every vintage, but... Um, mm -hmm. Definitely the, the vintages where it's, uh, where I, I, I think it's a shining example of, of Tempranillo, you'll see it. Very nice. Um, what, what's your production like? How many cases are you, you doing here? This is Texas, so that, that uh, can, can, <laughs> it's like a, a ping pong ball in a boxcar. Um, it's, uh, we've kind of started at you know, four to 6,000 cases and have gradually built up. 2010, um, met our full production goal, which is 20, um, followed by 2011, which was half that, um, mm -hmm. because of the drought and things right. like that. And then uh, 2012 was another bumper, and we're at production somewhere around 25,000. Okay. And that's about where you want to keep it, isn't it? That 20, I think, yeah, 20,000 is, is kind of how we were, what the facility was built for. And right. Things, uh, things become interesting when you when you have more grapes or more juice than you have tanks or barrels. Yeah, yeah. well I, I can totally understand that. Um, we were talking about, uh, with, uh, when we were taking the tour, um, about the philosophy also that you know, you're, you're here to make wine that can compete internationally. Yes. I would talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, our, it's, it's simple. If um, Texas is, uh, Kind of the novelty of Texas wine is wearing off, you know, right. and, and you know the consumer is is the wine consumer to me has just become more and more educated. You know, people don't come in saying, "Well, I don't know, we help you know, never tasted wine before." You know, help me out. They they know they know what they like and they're interested in tasting new things. People who have never heard of of Alianico want to taste it, um, and they have an opinion. You know, and um, I think I think it's great, but I also think that um, you know in the retail market there's there's only so many feet of shelf space, and if if our product doesn't um, if it doesn't meet the mark in, in both quality and price point, what's the point? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not we're not just making wine because we think it's fun to make wine in Texas. We're making wine in Texas because we can make great wine in Texas.
Texas. Um, and that and that goes back to what we were saying before. The way to do that is it all starts in the vineyard. Right. There's, there's no way around that. If it doesn't grow well here, I don't I don't care how great a winemaker you are. If, if you're not dealing with the best fruit, you're never going to make the best wine. Right. And uh, and I seem seem to think that it's there's more and more people out there that are that are coming to that same conclusion that you know maybe this isn't the best state to grow certain grapes. Uh, that we need to look at other things. Um, because you know, in, in the talks I've had with other winemakers, it seems like that's becoming the realization right. that we can't be necessarily Napa, um, we can't necessarily be um, any other place in the world. But you know, we, we want to concentrate on what Texas does best. I, I agree, and I, I think um, you know, there's there's a time and place, um, mostly a place <laughs> for <laughs> for everything. I you know, I don't know. Um, I just don't know that Texas will be famous for the the kind of internationally famous varietals. Right. Um, I think we'll be you know we'll make our mark with things that we'll introduce people to. But you know, Vermentino, um, I think we're turning that into a household name. Right. And uh, it has been in Italy for centuries. You yeah. Know? So, um, <laughs> you know, we're not you know we're not reinventing the wheel. I think we're just we're. We're trying to do what what we can do best in Texas. Right. I think the sun's gonna. I think the sun's gonna win here. Let's uh, let's go into Vermentino because uh, okay. this is very interesting. Um, first of all, just in general in Texas, having a Vermentino and, and kind of um, where did the where did the decision happen to to grow this? Um, uh, Mark Penna, my my predecessor, um, together with Stan Dukeman and. Uh, Bobby Cox, uh, it's like you can't have a conversation about Texas wine. Bobby <laughs> Cox, his name always comes up. Um, you know, kind of kicking dirt around on the high plains, and uh, and, and that's uh, you know, I, I will credit our success with decisions that were made um, back in you know 2004 mm -hmm. um, as far as planting these these varietals. And you know, Mark had spent uh, years and years growing grapes and on the high plains, and. Um, you know, somehow he had an idea of, of what would do well, and and I credit the growers um, for taking the chance. You know, because you got some guys, and and most of what they've heard of is Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay. You know, um, and and here we're saying, I know it costs a lot of money, but we want you to plant, you know, five acres of Vermentino, and, and here's why. And they say, okay, you know, we'll. We'll take a chance on you, and, right. um, and I, you know, I think it's working out for everybody. Right, and, and you were telling me this is this has been doing very well, right? Yes, this is a uh, hundred percent from uh, Bingham Family Vineyard, and I just I, I love this wine. I, this to me is uh, it just screams for seafood. So the good thing about the sun streaming in on me is I can really <laughs> do the whole sommelier thing and go with star bright and all yeah. that. Yeah. It is, <laughs> it is clean. She's yeah. like, I told you it was hitting your face. Like, yeah, well, it move up. <laughs> yeah, well, I deal with this at the house all the time. But usually the sun goes up pretty quickly. But, um, no, I mean, this is a, this is a wonderful... Citrusy, yeah. which you know, kind of gives it that that nice uh, nice pairing with seafood, and, and the acidity, just the the firm acidity, you know, palate cleansing acidity, is, you know, even with uh, stands up to the butter that you you know cook scallops in or yeah. shrimp. Yeah, or and that's something to remember. You know, and I, I sit, probably say it all the time with whites, but the acid is really very key with white wines because that's what you'll, you you key on more rather than with red wines. You've got the, the uh, uh, tannins, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, with the acidity, that's going to cut through those, cut through those sauces, you know, and, and it's going to enhance the flavor of seafood. Cut, it cuts the fat. Yeah, it I mean, this is, it does the same thing that tannin does with red wine. Acid cuts the fat. Tannin does the same thing with with red wine. Oh yeah, it's nice acid. A, it's firm acidity, and still got those citrus, the grapefruit yeah, it, citrus. And it, I even get a little bit of salinity to it, um, you know. So yeah, I it will definitely. I'm 
I, you don't know, but my viewers know I'm not a seafood fan at all. I don't like it, period. <laughs> However, having had some seafood and pairing it with some white wines, I understand mm -hmm. why it's such a great pairing. Um, but yeah, I mean, even, even so, like, I would say like the shellfish, or it really tastes like I'm, I'm, I've got shells. Like went to the coast mm -hmm. um, or the shore, if you're on the East Coast, um, and I and I bit into some shells, some seashells, you know, and I got some of that. Um, Maybe it's like a minerality. It's a minerality, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really minerality with a little bit of salinity to it, you know, and and you're getting that. I'm, I'm getting that lemon and lime type of um, citrus quality out of it. Yeah, you know, it's 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 beautiful. It still has that, you know, it's like that little elusive pear, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, pear, pear's not a real, pears don't, you know, I mean, you can definitely identify pear smell, but they're not extremely aromatic, and that's kind right. of how it, how it comes out of this wine. It's just sort of this elusive pear aroma that kind of skirts around for me, you know, that, that lemony, zesty, and, and right. grapefruit, I mean, it just smells like, you know. And you, I, I tell the grapefruit, I smelled the grapefruit, and then I looked at the bottle, and it went grapefruit, I'm like, well, of course I smelled grapefruit, <laughs> because the bottle said it would. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had gotten on, on that second, uh, the, the sniff, right before we, I tasted one more time, I got that little bit of grapefruit, it was like, yeah. all of a sudden, yep. whereas they didn't get it initially at, at, at first. Initially at first, is that really a thing to say? Well, <laughs> Christian, yeah, there's your question. I asked a question, but one of my buddies, uh, a good friend of mine, and he watches the show, and he, he says he really hates when people ask questions. Like, this is the best one I've ever had, type of like, it, 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 you know, type oh. of thing. And he says it should be a drinking game. So I have now <laughs> well, given I, a shout out to my I buddy should, Christian. I, I, I've got some quarters. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I really like this a lot. Um, and again, I'm you know, looking at the back of the label, talking about salads. You know, I can definitely see this with, uh, with to me, and I normally like to have spinach salads, you know, the typical spinach salad with the balsamic and the blue cheese and the, and the pecans. But oh, sure. I would actually probably just be regular garden salad for me on this one, rather than the, rather than the spinach part with that. I, I would just like a garden salad with a well, balsamic even or, or the good Italian. thing is, yeah, with the oil in there, yeah, this will cut right through, and you could even, you know, like even cheese, yeah, you know, and have like feta or something in there. Mm -hmm. I think it would still, still make it a nice, um, a nice match. And I, you know, I should say our kind of all what we do here, you know, in, in going on to our philosophy about how you know if it if it grows well here, we're you know that's kind of rule number one. You know, rule number two is it's a food companion. You know, wine wine is supposed to be on the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Or breakfast table. It, it or it doesn't matter, yeah, right? <laughs> Mimosas are just fine. Or just sparkling yeah. wine. No, nobody's, nobody's judging. I mean, Can Canto Felice, for example, is a perfect breakfast drink. I mean, it's a, <laughs> that is my breakfast go-to wine. Um, but it's, it, it, really, they do. They, um, there are places on the dinner table. And, and if, you know, if we make a wine that doesn't pair well with food, I, I failed. Right. You know, I think then that's, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of see that same, you know, calling card of uh, the, the higher acid, and that's that's really to it's to cut the fat. You'll find right. it in the red wines too. That they're you, it's not a big, overly oaked, you know, over the top where it's like you know that's, you're going to smoke a cigar with that. And you, you're not like why would you eat a meal with that? You're not going <laughs> to taste either one. Right. Um, but yeah, ours are, are it's 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 meant to meant to go with food. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought about the oak because we've had a, we had a really interesting conversation about your philosophy on oak and, and the oak barrels you use and and. And really, actually, me learning something, not, not, that I, not that I know everything, because like, God knows I don't, but you know, learning something about oak barrels that I just made an assumption that you really kind of pointed out that everyone has that same assumption. Oh, like neutral, neutral oak, and yeah. it's, it's just sort of a word that means your barrel is you know, three to five years old, and it depends on who you talk to, you know, who will call it neutral at three or four years. Um, but that's really all, I, I haven't bought a new barrel in several years, um, that we buy barrels from Hall Winery in, uh, in Napa, and Elk Cove um, is in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And they buy wonderful barrels and they use them for about three or four years, and then they don't want them anymore, and that's exactly when I want them. And, they, um, and, and, the, and to me, you know, the, kind of, the name is neutral, but they still impart, they still impart flavor. Period. You'll you'll taste it. Um, just not not that overly 
overly oaked uh, flavor that you get from new oak. Um, and there's no substitute for, for the aging vessel. I mean, right. they've known that for a million years. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, there's that, that little container that lets a little bit of oxygen in there over a long period of time. There's, right. just, there's no way around it. Yeah. But, yeah, instead of like aging it in stainless, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, it's just, um, there's no, I'll give you a little rinse here. Okay. Um, no substitute, but we, we do, um, and I feel that it, it kind of makes a wine that's more, what I would describe as elegant. Right. Um, it's hard to have a, an elegant, over-the-top oaked wine. Right, right. You know, and, and I mean, I, I have my, my days where I guess the, the heavily oaked wines are tasty, but, you know, in general, I'm, I'm probably more of a, somebody that isn't really seeking out the oak being, being the central, you know, being right. the central the, character, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. That has some of the earthy components, you know, a little bit of almost, you know, oh, yeah. cigar, tobacco. Having? This, I'm sorry, this yeah, is Alianico. Yeah. Yes. We know that. <laughs> we know we're having. <laughs> um, this is our 2010 uh, Alianico. And this, uh, the grapes from this come from... Uh, Oswald Vineyard and Reddy Vineyard. Okay. Um, this one, 2010, is predominantly from Oswald. Okay. And are these High Plains or Hill Country? High Plains. High Plains, okay. And, you know, when I first put my nose in it, and of course I already knew it was Ali Alianico, and um, I do have a love of Italian wines, and, and I find that Italian, almost every Italian wine has and I'll describe it for you, it's called accordion case, which means the father was, plays accordion. Okay. Um, uh, growing up, uh, he, had, he had a couple of accordions, but the accordion case has leather and felt and dust. It was always dusty, so, uh, but that Italian dust aspect, okay? okay? Yeah. But also, you also get that leather and there's a little bit of that felt or velvet type of thing. Um, and my first- yeah, That's a great descriptor. When I, yeah. when I put my nose into it, I, I got a hint of that, you know? No, I, I can. Yeah, I definitely get that. You know, and I, you know, you get also kind of a, you know, a little bit of a, I would say, kind of a cigar box type of thing. Yeah, a little tobacco. Yeah. A bit of like cedar. Right. Kind of. But this wine opens up uh, over, you know, over the course of a couple of hours. It in in um, the fruit comes out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's you kind of get these earthy, dusty uh, characters up front, and then. You can almost get some dark, dark fruits even in this right. short amount of time. I don't think we described the label as new dried floral. I think is kind of a. And I can see that with the dried floral, you know, not necessarily potpourri, but more the earthy type of thing um, with that. And, and on, on the palate, you know, it's, it's got some great tannins on mm -hmm. it. Um, they're not over the top, they're not, they're not killing you. Integrated. You know, they're integrated, yes. That was, that's the word I should be using more often. I don't use that, I, I use a balance, but integrated is a better word. Well, for tannins, that's the word I yeah. like, is they're either, they're either out there and, and you feel them in a way that's unpleasant. Right. Or they're integrated in the wine. And that's, you know, the barrel and bottle help with that. Right. But, this has got the, you know, the very typical uh, Alianico tannin. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they can be aggressive. And um, this one, you know, the, the, when, when the tannins are integrated, it's like you get a very pleasant, firm tannin. Right. Um, which is a feel, not a taste. Right. You know, it's, it's like an actual it's that physical yeah. feeling rather than a, the, the a taste. The astringency that you get, you know, same thing you get with tea leaves. You know, and it's you know it's coating the gums, but yeah, it's not it's not overpowering everything. Um, I still get that minerality. I still get that that um, uh, the wood part, like a cedar box thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I still get a little bit. Of, it's, there's there's, there's, a, there's a like a tad of bitterness to it, um, which I find I like it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a and, and prior to us uh, doing this, I did let him. You know, Alianico is one of my favorite grapes, so um, you know I'm glad we're I'm glad we're having this because I'm really liking this. You know, Great. you have a good story about 
Alianica too with some visitors, don't you? Oh yeah, Alianica. <laughs> or just in general, they, they, were, yeah. they were impressed. Right? Yeah, we had uh, a group of uh, Italian wine producers and winemakers that came in and I hosted them and took them on a tour and they you know, they had to taste all the, the wines from their hometown because, you know, it's a lot of what we do is Italian stuff and, and, um, boy, they, uh, that was the 2008 Alianico and, you know, the Italians age, I mean, mm -hmm. usually you're looking at five to seven vintages back, you know, typically. And, uh, yeah, their, their remark was, uh, in, in and I'm not going to do the accent because right. you know, how does it taste so good when it's so young? Right. And, uh, and that was, I took that as a, a a very high compliment and, and and really i mean it doesn't to me it doesn't taste like it was 2011 right mm. or it's a 10. Mm -hmm. yeah so it, it, 10. it doesn't taste like it's super young to me you know i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't put it you know as, as you know eight years old but i mean right if, if someone told me this was three to five years old i would totally be like okay i'll, I'll I, I would go with that yeah, you know? it's just, it's kind of like mature beyond its years, yeah. you know. It's... Yeah, I'm really digging this one. Definitely, you know, you, you come over here. Um, both of these wines are, you know, I, I would. Highly recommend getting either one of these wines. They're really good. I'm really digging the uh, Alianico. I really like the Vermentino. It's it's some good stuff. Let's see if I can get out of the sun a little bit. There we go. <laughs> but um, you know, it's, it, you, you've got some great stuff here. And well, thank you very uh, much. It's been a pleasure to, to to be here and and see the facility. Um, you know, and this is one of those. You know, again, there's there's been a short list of of wineries that I've wanted to visit, but I don't always get to make that trip, and this is one of those wineries that, is, that has been on the list. Cool. So um, I was very happy. To, happy you know, to have to, you. Yeah, I was very happy to you know be able to to make contact with with you guys and and uh, be able to stop by. It's it's been a wonderful experience. Great. So do um, uh, you have anything else you want to talk about with with these wines or anything else before we before we uh, move on? Oh, I mean, we just you know got to talk about two of them, but you know we have a you know portfolio of. Uh, of award-winning wines that uh, I would invite anyone and everyone to come give a taste for themselves. Absolutely. All right, we're going to wrap it up uh, for, the, for the show. Uh, as always, uh, make sure you click the links above. I'll have links. I'll have a link to the Dukeman Winery uh, uh, above. Click the links above to frame me up. Click the link below for the Dukeman Winery. Uh, of course, leave comments below. Um, and uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. We'll see everyone again next time.